Hi there, it's Connie Ray. Welcome to Connie Ray's Craft Room. Today's craft tutorial is this card, which I have hand coloured in here, and I've used copper embossing powder to emboss the sentiment. So I will show you exactly how I've done that. This is the stamp set. Whoop, I've just got all my colouring and pencils because so I'm using Prismacolor pencils. I use these because they're the ones that I've actually got, but you can use any colour medium that you like. It doesn't have to be um, Prismacolor pencils. It can be your stamping blends in the colours that you choose. It can be watercolour. It can be Copic markers. It can be whatever you like. It's just you, what your choice is. I use these because I've just got so many different colours in these pencils and I really enjoy colouring in with them. But I also enjoy doing the watercolouring and, and Copic markers and things like that. Copic markers or or um, the Stampin' Up! blends I find are really quick because they're alcohol based and they work really quickly. Whereas with colouring in with pencils it's a little bit slower, a little bit more technical. Um, well, not so much technical but a little bit slower. I think that's probably the choice of word. This is the stamp set that I'm using. This is the Ascented Blooms and I've used this stamp set here, um, which is the main stamp. And this is down here is the sentiment that I'm actually using and I've copper embossed that onto a piece of card stock that I've punched out using the coordinating punch that comes with this bundle. So you can just punch these out after you've stamped them or you can just punch out a piece of cardstock and just pop it on top after you've embossed or emboss and then cut it out. That's usually the best way to go about it. So what I'll do is I'll um, walk you through how I've done this and I won't hold you up in terms of timing but I'll colour in one of the um, I've already stamped um, my image, re-stamped another image. Um, and what I'll do is I'll do one flower and I'll show you how I've done it. Then I'll pop you on pause and I'll go and finish it. And then I'll come back and um, you'll have a nice coloured in card. But I will show you how I've actually achieved the colouring in and the technique that I use. Everybody has their own way of doing things. So these are the colours that I've actually used. None of them are coordinating at the moment together in terms of sets. Um, they're just coordinating in colours and that just doesn't make sense what I said there. Okay, so I'm thinking I might do the blue blue flower here because it's, it's, it's large and it does come up well, even though it does take a little bit of time. So for the dark outside, I'm going to be using PC903 and that is called True Blue. And then we've got PC904 for the colouring in and that is going to be Light Cerulane Blue. I'm not even sure if I said that right, and I probably didn't. And then just to finish it off, Peacock Blue, which is 1027. So they're the colours I'm going to be using on this big flower down here. So I'll just move these over here, and I'll move this one over here, and I will start doing my colouring in. I start with my darkest, not uh, in this instance, out of these two, I'm going to start with the darkest colour because... Um, that's usually how most people colour. You can colour whichever way you like, but to get the effect of depth in the picture, you like to colour on the outline of it and then colour it in with a lighter colour and then raise it up. With this other blue pencil, I just went in and, and made a few, um, made a few, a little bit more depth in my colouring in there. But that's, you know, like it's just me not knowing when to stop really. So anyway, I'll show you how I've done it. So this is the card that, um, this is the flower that I have, oh, have I got the right one, the darkest one? Yep, yeah, yeah. I thought I had the wrong one there for a second. So basically you're just going to go on the outline of the image on the inside. Just go around. Mind you, you know, like colouring in and colouring is, it's just what you prefer and what's, what works well for you. So, you know, just play around. If you find colouring in relaxing, I do. I don't find it relaxing when I have to when I decide to do a tutorial <laughs> because I think, oh no, I'm going to do something wrong. I'm going to, you know, have to take 500 copies and, but you know, you get used to it. So hopefully I don't ramble on too much for you. So just going around on the outside. Now while I'm doing this, I will fill you in on the card details. I'll use Whisper White thick cardstock um, for all of the card itself. I don't like using, um, look, it's not worth it for me to use really cheap cardstock because the card just doesn't come out the same. And if you are using Copic markers or alcohol markers or water colouring, you do need to have a really good quality paper. It affects the image and it affects the quality of your card. So 
it's entirely up to you. Certainly, I if I've got something that I'm just designing and I want to play around with, I will use maybe a really cheap cardstock. But even so, it still affects the outcome of the card, and I find it more frustrating than anything. So, you know, I use a thick Whisper White or the thickest cardstock I can get and the best quality white cardstock I can get because it just looks so much different when you finished your image and the color bleeds through on um, with the alcohol markers as well so the cheaper the paper the more bleed you're going to have through it and you don't really want that so um, unless you can cover it up but you know it's entirely up to you what you use but if you're just playing around cheap you know and you want to get a feel for things by all means cheap cardstock but when your final presentation's there you don't want to use cheap cheap's nasty as they say but anyway that's just my opinion now with the colouring in, I'm not a colouring in, like I'm not a colourist, I'm, I'm not a professional colour in person. I just go with what I've seen or what I've picked up or what I've taught myself and that's it. There's nothing more than that. I don't think, you know, I could really say anything. I, I have no desire to be a professional colouring in person. <laughs> I do like my creative stuff, but I have no desire to be, a, you know, a professional colourist, but I do enjoy it. And I find it relaxing. So hopefully you'll find it pretty much the same. So as you can see, this this the outline of the flower is actually starting to become really obvious with this pencil colouring in. I do like these pencils. They are very um very user-friendly and very soft. They're very soft. Next to the alcohol markers, the Stampin' Up Blends and, and the Copic markers and watercolour markers. The alcohol markers, I think, are faster. So if you're in a bit of a hurry and you want a really nice professional finish, the, the Stampin' Blends would work really well for this. But if you've got time and you've got pencils like I have, um, you know, if you want to just play around with colouring in, it is all in vogue, isn't it, at the moment? It's nice and relaxing. Okay, so at the moment I've got the stage where I've outlined the flower and I've put in a little bit of depth into the flower. So now I'm going to go in with my next lightest colour, which is the Prisma 904. And I'm just going to colour all the parts that I haven't outlined. And I just like to go around in circles most of the time. Sometimes I don't just for clarity, I like to... You know, push a little bit harder on my pencil. And as you can see, when I show you this, you'll actually see that there is, I'm just going to give that a little bit more of a, there we go. Um, as you can see, what you when I hold it up closer to the camera, you'll see that the dimensions coming into it with the two different tones. And they're only a tone apart, these ones, and that's the principle of it. You want to be just a tone apart. You don't want to be ten tones apart, you just want to be one tone apart. So try and just remember that when you're choosing colouring in tools, whatever you choose to use, you go tone by tone. You don't go too many tones apart, unless that's the look that you, you're trying to achieve, which I find really... Um, bizarre but oh, look each to their own I, I don't really know but just tone after tone so this is 90, 903 and this is 904 not necessarily in an order but that's how they work so just try and remember that when you're doing it the darker one that I've got is for a different purpose and it's really just because of the color that I chose it so as you can see that flower is coming up quite nice I'll hold it up a bit closer as you can see it's got you've got the accentuated outside and the coloring going on on the inside and it's actually giving it like a nice standout color so i'm happy with that coloring if you like these colors that's great you can oh, I mark that you can use whatever colors you like really it's entirely personal and optional but it's really just to show you how how it's been done that's all So what else can I tell you about this card? I've used the copper embossing powder. I'm not even sure if the copper embossing powder is still available from Stamping Up because 
I haven't even had a look in the catalog. I know that's terrible, but that's the color that I used because I didn't want black. It was too intense and I didn't want silver and I was sort of like um, denied and copper. I'm not sure if the copper is still available, but anyway, have a look. But I used copper in this instance just to because it just really went well with the flowers. So. OK, so that's that color. Now, the final color that I've used, which is the really dark color, and this is uh, 1027. All I've done is just on the bottom in the creases of the card, like of the flower, I should say, um, I've just put around the lines a little bit of depth so that it looks a little bit deeper in color when you're looking at it. And it provides this really lovely look, like a two-toned effect, or in this case, a three-toned effect, I suppose. I'm not sure. But I didn't want to do too much of it, but you can see how it sort of like brings it out and it just looks a little bit more obvious. So I just was playing around with it a little bit more, probably a little bit more than I should have been because <laughs> I just tend to play all day and then I either wreck it or I don't. It's a bit of a gamble. But um, yeah, that's how it goes with this one. So that looks kind of OK to me. Um, with the another thing that a lot of people do do um, that I've seen when they're crafting is that they will grab their white pencil and in some instances they would just go into the area of the leaf or the flower or whatever it is that they want to use um, sorry they want to lift a bit and they will use white to lift um, look like it's lifting the actual leaves themselves and that works really well as as well with the alcohol markers you can use the colorless alcohol blender which will do the same thing it will lift out the color so in some of these flowers I did that, and some of them I didn't. I just um, decided at the time. And you don't even have to do this. I find it looks quite nice with the colour in. So so that's the colour. Oh, sorry, there you go. That's the colouring in for that. And it looks nice and soft and fudgy. <laughs> so um, that's how I've, I colour in, in terms of doing simple colouring in, nothing like rocket science. But you'd use the same principle with whichever colour medium you choose, whether it's markers, pencils or whatever. So what I'll do now is I'll just go ahead and I will finish um, the actual colouring of the stamp and I will come back to you and I will have most of that done and we'll finish off making the card. Won't be a second. I changed my mind. I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to show you all of this colouring in. If you think that you can do it, you don't have to sit and watch the whole drama of the colouring in process but some people actually like to see it so I thought to myself you know what I know that there's um, there's a few people that do actually do the whole thing and they speed it up and I will try and do that because um, I'm not quite sure how to do that but I will learn to do that for you so um, I just thought you know what I'm just going to show you how I colour it all in at the moment I'm now doing the foliage so I'm doing the foliage in the colour that is uh, PC 911 and it's a nice dark deep green and I'm just is still going, and that's the principle, still sticking to the principle going around the edges. Just in the darkest colour that I'm using out of them. Hopefully I can fast forward this and you won't have to um, sit and watch it all. <laughs> okay, and the green that I'm using colour is PC912. So this is just going to make it look a little bit more real, I hope. <laughs> and again, it takes a lot of playing around, you know, with unless you're, you've been doing it for a while. You've got those experts that know their, their stuff. Um, but it takes a bit of playing around with colouring and getting your colours together that you really enjoy looking at and balancing. The turn on tone seems to work really well if you're not sure. Okay, I always do that puffy thing at the end because I you get bits of the pencil all over the place. <laughs> and I always, I'm getting a really bad habit of just, and I've got to remember I'm on camera. So I do apologise for puffing on everything. All right, there we go. And I might just bring in the green just a little bit more. As you can see, it's sort of like coming alive, which is good. 
it's alive. Turn my blues out of there because I've done my blues. Okay, for my yellow, going around the edges, doing a half tone here. I like how some people, the colorists, they can actually um, put in the highlights into the, the picture themselves and make like, oh my gosh, it's so clever how they do that. I haven't gotten to that stage yet, but you know, mid practice, as they say, practice makes perfect. This is yellow, obviously, it's actually yellow ochre. And it's PC942. So if you've got a set of pencil, Prismacolor pencils, that's the number that you're going to be looking for. If you haven't, you can do whatever colour you want, really. There we go. So now we're going to get the lighter yellow and it's PC16 Canary Yellow. And I'm just going to go around with the Canary Yellow. Actually, I'm not sure if this was the colour I used in the first one, but anyway, it looks a little bit brighter. But it doesn't matter. It still looks nice. It does look a little bit brighter, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, that one looks more like a buttercup yellow. Maybe it's a buttercup yellow. I'll just pop some on top of it to see if it tones it down a bit. Yeah, it works alright. That'll work. There we go. Whoop, do that thing again. <laughs> okay, so, so far, there's your leaves and your, your foliage and your blue and your yellow flower good isn't it the colors come up really nice so then with the um, little little tiny flowers on this side I have used my grays and I've used um, cool gray which is 1063 to do my edges Again, you're just doing all your edging and then that's cloud blue I don't know if that was the color that I actually used hmm. we'll see yes okay it's this is called cloud blue and it's 1023 so but then when I put it on I, th I was expecting it to and I'm thinking no that's not the color I use but it is it's more like a silver or a um yeah it's a nice color that's probably why I chose it in the first place but um because usually I just have a piece of paper on the side and you know you test your colour before you put it down to see if that's really the colour that you want because sometimes they are a little bit you know not quite sure and this one okay so that's my little silver flowers and then from these ones here I liked these ones because they ended up looking like shells I think they, for me they just reminded me of shells on the beach so um, I really liked them so these ones I am using the dark color again on first and then the light color after and this dark color is process red PC994 so if you like this one Alcohol markers are quicker. Did I say that? I may have already said that. Um, but you know, some things are worth waiting for. So the, the last ones are going to be um, the purple ones. So the dark purple is PC1008 and the light purple is going to be 
PC956. So what I'll do, oh, and the inside of this little rose flower here is blush pink and it's PC928. So what I'll do is I'll pop you on hold and uh, pause and I'll finish this off and I'll come back. Hi there, so I have finished my colouring in and I have cut out my um, card front with my, I think this is a W plus nine sunshine frame, which gives it the lovely scalloped edge. Um, I prefer to have a card um, with a really nice finish. I like to, have, like to have edges and bits and pieces, but I don't necessarily want it to look too busy. But anyway, I prefer to use something like this. So that's what I've done. If you haven't got anything, it doesn't matter. You can put it on just um, a normal um, five and a quarter by four mat. That's up to you entirely. It's not going to make mean too much. And now I've got my piece of paper here and I have um, used my emboss embossing buddy to on um, my piece here. So I'm going to stamp it with um, Versamark so that my image um, is going to be nice and clear. And I'm going to emboss it. And you need to use um, your embossing buddy to go over your piece because it gets rid of all the oil and the lint and bits and pieces that can be picked up from fingers and stuff. So. I'm just going to pop that onto here. Really hard to see when I've got the light over the top of me, I've got to say. But it looks okay. At the moment. I'll know when I go to put the powder on. <laughs> so we'll get grab that. Let me just see. Oh yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Okay, so and then we'll get our chamois. A shimmy chamois. I don't even know. Yeah, I, I was going to say, is it called a chamois? Yeah, it's called a chamois. Um, yeah, something like that. And I've cut a piece of mine so that I can keep another piece if I need to and I can use it for a bigger one. So I just constantly use this little square bit that I've cut off. Okay, so I've cut, cleaned that up. Get that out of the way because we don't need our stamp writers and our chamois anymore. And I will bring in... These are the little, um, what do you call them, sequins that I used to stick on for my embellishments. And this is the copper embossing powder, which I've used for my sentiment. So I'm just going to sprinkle that on. Looks like coffee. And it looks fine. Phew, lucky. So I'm just going to put another, just to be sure. Lovely. I always like to do it a couple of times because I just think, oh, just in case I missed. Three times lucky. But you don't need to. The embossing powder is quite good. Okay, so that's my embossing powder. I will turn on my gun and get rid of all my um, bits and pieces. So we are going to be using the punch in a second to punch out the sentiment that I've just done. I'm just going to wait for my heat gun to um, warm up because it's best to use your heat gun, let it heat up first and then apply the heat and use it across the top of it very quickly. It's best if you do it like that rather than um, heat it up and on the actual um, sentiment or the image itself. It doesn't work as well. So basically that's what you, you want to do. So oop, my lead isn't long enough to show you. So um, I'll quickly do it. Okay, here we go always thinking of you which is really nice and that's the embossing uh, sorry the um, copper color isn't it it's really pretty yeah okay so we're just going to cut that out evenly hopefully so let me just get it in line and Easy, peasy. So we need a card base. So I haven't done that. So we're going to make it um, 11. I'll just bring this over. Our 
card base is going to be using the whisper white thick whisper white our card base is going to be 11 is that even yep. I just changed over my blades so by four and a quarter hopefully actually I changed over the blades the mat and um, oh. the um, the mat this part here the, tr the trim the scorer and score at five and a half which is this bit here and there you go and I've just replaced all of those pieces which is really good it's a very good tool to have because you get so much done in one so we've got oh there we go I'm just gonna score that across is it even yes it is even so we've now got our card front like yay and we are going to quickly put on some dimensionals um yep this one um on the first draft that i did i actually had the trim of the dimensionals left like this whoops sorry guys like this is a little piece here and these are really good these little pieces for cards like that you can run them on the bottom there and they actually give the card a really nice lift so never throw them out guys they're always really really handy always handy to use for front card bases and bits and pieces so I'm rushing now because I know that you know people don't like sitting forever and waiting so I've got my rush on and that's when I make my mistakes and I say silly things but you know some things are worth watching Time flies when you're having fun. All right, so we're just going to bring the card down and line it up a bit. And then I'm just going to watch as I put the card down where I'm actually putting it because I'm not really good with them lining up as most of you probably who follow me know. Okay, look at that, that's not too bad. All right, and then we've got now our little sentiment and I will use my smaller um, dimensionals for this one so any of the items that you've seen me demonstrate today you can get from my store which has got the link included in this tutorial and you can just click on the link and it will take you straight to the shop if from anywhere in Australia doesn't matter where you are there we go we just pop that on get that out of the way and then last but not least we need to have a few odd sequins just um, these are the matte ones these are actually quite nice I didn't realize they were actually matte until I put them down whereas the other ones are, are shiny um, if that makes sense there's some shiny shiny ones and I thought oh these are nice so um, obviously I'm using the green color because it is a garden and there we go I think that's it okay so hopefully you have enjoyed this tutorial and you will give coloring in a try and it doesn't matter how good or bad it comes out there is no such thing um, so give it a go have fun doing it and see what you come up with that's a really lovely stamp to play with and it's a really easy card to do to give somebody you can make quite a few of them one more thing I do want to mention is if you do make an error with your coloring in um, and you go over the lines and you know we all do it just get your um, the um, the white pigment ink and you can just pick up like the areas with the white pigment ink and just get rid of that mistake and that is really handy because sometimes you just go over so I just want to share that with you so I hope you enjoy I hope you choose some nice colors love to see some of the um, options that you have chosen to do and I've hoped you enjoyed it and I will hopefully speak to you soon thanks for stopping by